Greetings, everybody. My name is Mona Bell. I serve as Associate Director of Georgia Sea Grant at the University of Georgia. I also have the good fortune of uh, being on the Associate Board of Directors of the Earth Science Women's Network. Um, this is ESWN. It is a network that began in 2002 uh, by a group of women atmospheric scientists from different institutions who recognized the need for, for more support and community amongst women scientists. ESWN's mission is to support the scientists of today and welcome the scientists of tomorrow. I have with me today uh, Dr. Tracy Holloway. She is the Gaylord Nelson Distinguished Professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, jointly appointed in the Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies and the Department of Atmospheric and Oceanic Studies. Um, Dr. Holloway is also the team leader for the NASA Health and Air Quality Applied Science team. And most importantly for our discussion today, she is the founding member of Earth Science Women's Network and Scienceathon. So without further ado, Tracy, welcome. Thank you so much, Mona. It is such an honor to be here today. Fabulous. So Tracy, tell us a little bit about your research and the types of things that you do in your current position. So I'm a professor at the University of Wisconsin, and my research focuses on air quality. So I teach classes around air pollution and uh, analyze uh, chemicals in the air that make us sick, that impact visibility, that impact climate, and have other negative impacts. And so I use computer models and satellite data to basically understand how we can make our air as clean and healthy as possible. Fabulous. Uh, Casey, tell us a little bit more about your involvement with ESWN. How did it all start and uh, how, how did it get to be what it is today and what does it mean to you? Yeah, well, you know, my role with the Earth Science Women's Network is really one of the proudest accomplishments of my career and such an important part of my life. Um, back in 2002, I had recently graduated from graduate school and I was at a meeting of the American Geophysical Union. Mm -hmm. When I started talking with some um, colleagues and peers, we were all either graduate students or recent uh, graduates, and we were having conversations that related to what's next in our careers, um, the talks that we were giving at the scientific meeting, uh, strategies on where to apply for a research funding, uh, topics that really spanned the personal and the professional. And we decided to stay in touch through email after the meeting. And as time went on, we said, oh, you know, my friend uh, Susie or my friend Katie, she'd be really good for this uh, email group. And the email group grew and grew and grew. And then uh, Christine Wiedenmeyer, who was at NCAR, um, suggested that we move from just a list of emails to a list serve hosted by the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Um, and then once it was on a list serve through NCAR, we um, decided to, you know, think about ways to make this more open, more inclusive, more useful to early career women across the geosciences. And for many years, it was doubling in size every year. And then in um, 2000, uh, in, in the mid 2000s, uh, we had a large grant from the National Science Foundation that helped build some infrastructure. And as that group, as that grant was ending, we decided to form a 501c3 nonprofit so that we could build some financial security for the organization and have the nimbleness and structure um, that would really allow the group to have a maximum impact. So, you know, through this process, I've gotten a tremendous amount of support and advice and career development um, that has benefited my own career. And it's been exciting to see how this initiative has helped other women in their careers. And really, I think, had an impact on the entire scientific enterprise because there's initiatives that have been taking place 
through our professional societies, through universities, um, within research groups, it would not have been possible without ESWN. That is just amazing, uh, Tracy. It's uh, it come to think of it, you know, you were a scientist and educator, and then you started this community that brought us all together from around the world. As an international scientist and scholar, I can attest to the fact that ESWN has been a sounding board for me, my constant friend and companion since, gra since graduate school, uh, and even now that I'm in my professional life. So, so thank you and uh, all your uh, forward thinking peers for, for putting this thing together for all of us. Um, it, it has been a wonderful, wonderful resource. Um, so in light of ESWN's 20th anniversary this year, um, is there something that you're particularly proud of? Honestly, um, to me, uh, what I'm proudest of is the impact we've had on individual lives. I'm often at meetings and women come up to me and say uh, how they had been feeling very alone in graduate school, but by being connected with the network of advice through mm -hmm. ESWN or coming to one of our events, they uh, found the community that was helping make them feel like they belonged in science or to overcome a hurdle. Because I think sometimes we encounter a hurdle and we think, oh, that's just me, or maybe I'm not cut out to be a scientist. Hmm. But then when we see that, no, this is a hurdle that many women are facing, many early career scientists are facing, uh, then first of all, we don't feel so alone. And second of all, we have the resources to deal with it, the solutions or, and whether those are personal solutions or systematic changes that we need to make around the way science interacts with early career professionals and work-life balance or access to childcare or, you know, gender equity and racial inclusion. I mean, whatever the issue is, if you think it's just you, then the solution is often, well, maybe I should go do something else. But when you realize that you're part of a community, the community is changing and that you're valued and your voice is valued, to me, that has an enormous impact. And so it's had an impact for me. I'm not sure that I would have stayed in science without ESWN, but it's also, uh, I can, tell from anecdote after anecdote and some systematic social science surveys that we've done over the years um, really changed the lives of many, many people. And that is what I'm proudest of. Fabulous, including myself, ESWN definitely did change my life. Uh, it does create that sense of belonging. And uh, as you mentioned, by providing mentorship support, uh, it feels like you're connected to a larger set of women scientists across the globe who probably face similar issues. Um, so ESWN is a member-led organization, Tracy. Um, people volunteer their time and resources to this organization. Why should people get engaged and give to ESWN? Well, ESWN is really an organization that's changing lives. And it's changing the lives of uh, scientists who are serving as role models, who are helping to think about the future of the planet, who are discovering new solar systems. I mean, it's a really uh, exciting blend of big picture, save the world initiatives and individual human experience. And uh, the kind of initiatives that ESWN has launched over the years have really filled a gap that you know, for example, having workshops to train early career scientists in leadership skills or um, engaging with professional societies to um, figure out how to better address gender inclusion in the awards process. Mm -hmm. um, these are areas where a little bit of focused attention and effort can be transformative to the system, the science system that was designed hundreds of years ago and not around the needs of mothers and fathers and 
you know, people moving across the country and around the world. I think this idea of how can we make the good things about science work for the people who are in science today. Um, ESWN has been remarkably effective at designing those solutions. So I've given a lot of my time, I've given uh, money and I've helped raise money because I really believe in this cause. And I'm most excited to see what's next on the horizon. What are the needs for financial support that the Earth Science Women's Network has today? And how, um, how, what can they do with each new dollar that's given to them? And I know that each dollar given to ESWN could have a huge impact on the world. And I'm excited to see what leaders like you, Mona, are gonna, uh, where you're taking the group next. Well, thank you again, Tracy, for uh, those insightful perspectives. We hope that ESWN over the next 20 years can prosper and uh, hopefully we'll take it in, in these other directions to prepare scientists, women scientists from around the, around the globe, just like me and you, um, to, to succeed and uh, retain in, in geosciences. So thank you again for your time. For everybody who is viewing this uh, presentation, this recording, uh, please visit eswnonline.org to find ways in which you can support ESWN's mission um, by engaging in different committees that ESWN has and or by donating to ESWN. Thank you again for your time. And thanks, Tracy, for everything. Thank you. Bye, Mona. Bye, everyone.